Chapter 1. Young Thinker. William Henry Gates, 111, was born on October 28, 1955, in Seattle, Washington. Because he was the third Gates male to be named William Henry, the family nicknamed him Trey. Trey is a cards player's na term for three. Everyone else called him Bill. Bill was a very active child. He would rock for hours on his rocking horse, back and forth, back and forth. Years later in business meetings, Bill was known for rocking back and forth in his chair. He said it helped them think. Bill's parents were educated and well-to-do. William Gates, sir, was a successful lawyer. Mary Gates was a school teacher. After her children were born, she cared for her kids and did a lot of volunteer work. Smart and outgoing, Mary often took young Bill along with her on volunteer outings. The Gates were a warm and close family. Bill's sister, Christy, was two years older and his sister, Libby, was nine years younger. On school nights, no TV was allowed. Instead, the Gates family talked, played games, and read books. Bill was a hungry reader. At age seven, he decided to read the entire encyclopedia. He read his way through all of world book. Anyone could see that young Bill was very smart. For Bill, thinking was an activity like drawing or reading. Once the whole family, except Bill, was in the car, ready to go on a short trip. Where's Bill? asked Christy. When his mother went back inside and found him, she said, Bill, what are you doing? Bill explained. I'm thinking, mother. Bill always looked for ways to challenge himself. He was left-handed. If he was bored in school, he took notes with his right hand. When he was 11, Bill entered a contest at his church. Any kid who could memorize the sermon on the mount got to have a dinner at a restaurant on the top of the famous Space Needle in Seattle. The Sermon on the Mount is a long Bible passage. It would fill 17 full pages in the book. Bill learned it all by heart and amazed the minister. Bill was the only one who didn't make a mistake. I could believe that an 11-year-old boy had the kind, that kind of mind, the minister said. Bill told the minister, matter of faculty, I can do anything I set my mind to. Winning mattered a lot to Bill. He hated losing at anything. Each summer, the Gates family stayed two weeks at a cabin on Hood Canal near Boogit Sound. The place was called Cheerio. Lots of other young families went to Cheerio, too. Weeks there were filled with fun, sports, and games. Every year, the kids held their own Olympics. All the kids wanted Bill on their team. Just because he was smart and used big words didn't mean he was good at sports. Bill was small in size, but he made up for it in pure grit. No matter what he did, Bill gave him his all. Seattle and the Space Needle Seattle, in the state of Washington, is the largest city in the Pacific Northwest with a population of more than 600,000 people. It is a beautiful city surrounded by mountains and water. It lies on Puget Sound, an arm of the Pacific Ocean. At the end of the 19th century, Seattle became a gateway north to Alaska after gold was found near the Klondike River. Thousands of people left hoping to strike gold and get rich quickly. Almost a century later, the city developed into a major technology center after the Microsoft Corporation moved there from Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1979. Bill Gates is Seattle's most famous native citizen. In 1962, Seattle hosted a World's Fair called Century 21. It gave vis visitors, including six-year-old Bill Gates, a glimpse into the wonders of the future. One of the fair's main attractions was the Space Needle. Uh, Space Needle, which still stands today as Seattle's most famous landmark. It was built to withstand winds as high as 200 miles an hour and earthquakes that reach 9.1 on the richer scale. The Space Needle looks something like a flying saucer hovering more than 500 feet above the city.
The elevator ride up to the observation deck takes less than a minute, but waiting in line for the elevator can take hours. From the observation deck or inside the Space Needle Revol Revolving Restaurant, viewers can take in the city skyline as well as the Cascade Mountains to east and the Olympic Mountains to the west. Bill's favorite sports were the ones on which you were always moving fast. Bill loved to water ski, ice skate, swim, and downhill ski. In sixth grade, Bill seemed to lose interest in school. Bill, Sir, and Mary saw that their son needed a change. They decided to send him to a private school named Lakeside at the beginning of seventh grade. It turned out to be a great decision. The school pointed Bill's life in a new direction.